Welcome to my fall roundup. This is going to be about the successes and the failures I had in my garden this past year. I'm still not finished in my garden. I still do have a few crops yet to harvest. Um, I have lettuce under my row cover. I also have a few carrots. Um, parsnips are not ready to be picked yet. We have not had a frost yet. And here we are into November, headed into the second week in November. I'm very pleased. I wish you knew these things ahead of time and when really you're going to get your last frost. I want to show you one of my harvests. Here's broccoli. I have perhaps about um, eight to ten um, beautiful heads of broccoli that I am in eager anticipation to pick. There's another one over there. I did have a couple heads that were somehow bitten off. I'm not really sure. I had the row cover on them. Um, I planted these in July and I plant my brassicas with row covers to keep the pests out. But this was a new planting of broccoli in a bed that had, um, I think, watermelon in here. And um, there may have been something already existing in the soil that um, ate a few of the, you know, the heads of the plants. But I do have shoots on those plants that are coming out. And maybe I'll get some tiny little uh, broccoli flowerets off those little shoots. But anyway, so that is one of my, um, my uh, crops still yet to harvest. Wanted to show you in the background, you can see here, we still have some leaves on the trees. The beautiful shot of the trees, the red maples going down the driveway, they're all gone. Um, to my right here is the vineyard and those leaves are all gone. <laughs> but that's okay, that's supposed to happen. Anyway, and then we have a lot of uh, fir trees, uh, spruces, blue spruces in the background. And so they provide a nice windbreak in, in the wintertime. But we do still have this maple here um, that's over in the corner, um, just on the downhill side towards the water that still has quite a number of leaves. So I've been raking and raking and raking and composting and composting. And if you saw my video on how I compost my leaves and how I uh, break them all down. Um, that's what I've been doing. Also, I don't know if, I'm sure I've introduced you. Here is my guardian dog, or my garden dog, always with me. He can't come much closer because he's got an invisible fence and he can't go beyond that border. But uh, he's my garden dog. When the chickens are out, he's the guardian dog. And when I'm in the garden, he's the garden dog. Okay, on to the garden. Um, I have some old standards that I always grow, the carrots and the lettuce and the snap peas and the garlic and the dill and the cucumbers. They did very well again this year, as they always do. Edamame too, I had a very good crop of edamame. I'll see if I can't um, insert a picture. And um, those were all very, had very positive luck with those. Um, sometimes I don't have positive luck with onions. This year I had a very good crop. I did grow them from seed this year. Um, I had maybe a couple dozen from, from sets. Leeks I always grow from seeds. Again, a great crop this year. I've left uh, perhaps a dozen in the garden to winter over and I can pull them at any time or let them go till spring and I will still have leeks to use in the spring. Um, my biggest success was in beans this year. I had the bean arbor and I had three different types of beans planted. I had um, a green pole bean, I think it was called Blue Lake, and uh, tried and true, gave me many, 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 uh, many beans and kept on going, you know, well into the season. I could still have it up now and still be getting beans. Um, I had uh, a purple potted pole bean. <laughs> That's a mouthful. 
And then I also had um, uh, noodle beans or yard long beans or red uh, Chinese red noodle beans. Uh, new for me, I, it was just a fun thing to do. I saved seeds, so I think maybe I'll perhaps put up a new arbor again, um, a second arbor for those. They were successful and I, and I like them. And um, I packed my freezer full of, of all sorts of beans, along with, I think I had yellow wax beans also. Saved a good deal of seeds for that and planning on planting uh, at least double of what I had planted this year. So, um, of course, I have huge dreams for gardening 2021, um, which includes, of course, uh, building two new raised beds here. So it, these are 10 feet long by four feet. I'm not sure quite what I am going to plant in them. I will do a video on how I'm going to uh, diagram up my garden, and maybe that will help people in in what they um, need to think about in advance before they just start plopping seeds in. I'm guilty of just plopping seeds anywhere, and this year I did find that I found it hard to find spots in my garden where I could plant crops for fall harvest. So I'm going to try and do a better job with that uh, next year. Um, uh, the squashes that I had, uh, zucchini uh, and yellow squash did fine, did all right. I don't know that I'm going to have as many as I did. I think maybe I'll just limit myself to maybe one one or two plants, I have probably one plant of each one of those. Um, we aren't a huge eater. I only like to eat them fresh. I don't freeze them. I don't feel that they they freeze very well. They get kind of mushy. Um, the honey nut squash, roaring success. I'm very pleased with that. We've had uh, a number of those already. Um, I'm. I will move it out where they were before because they've been there for a couple of years. Spaghetti squash is another one that I had a nice harvest on and I will plant those again. I did have delicata squash. I probably have, oh, I had about three plants and I probably got about 10. I'm not sure if that's gonna make it back into the garden or not. I had a real nice crop of um, sugar baby watermelons. I probably had about nine of them. Um, and a couple were a, a, a pretty nice size. I know they don't grow very large. Um, the size of a, of a bowling ball would be a large one. But I will plant those next year. I need to find a better spot for them and, and let, them, let, let them be able to trail a little bit more. Um, I did try cantaloupe on a trellis. Uh, most of my um, my space for it was limited. And there's my guardian dog. He wants to be over here with me. Hey, Coop. <laughs> he probably hears the squirrels. Anyway, so I'm finding another place for cantaloupe. Um, I really want, I like growing it on the trellis. It keeps it off the ground. Um, I did have some that were closer to the ground. They they rotted or got some insect damage or something. But I think I might find a spot that has more sun. I think it was shaded. It was next to the edamame. The edamame grew up really fast and uh, provided uh, a shadier location than that they probably um, deserved. Anyway, so on to tomatoes. Tomatoes are such a big crop for gardeners. Um, it's probably one of the most planted fruits in a in a backyard gardener's garden. <laughs> anyway, so I had many different varieties this year. I wanted to test out some new ones and go with the tried and true ones. The tried and true for me are Amish paste and the alpacas. Um, uh, I usually have in the past. Uh, planted Celebrity. This year I didn't, but I am going to go back to Celebrity because they are a tried and true one. I'm going to introduce at least another one to my lineup. Um, haven't really decided which one. I have to do some research on that. Um, 
Uh, another one that, that did well for me was the Hungarian Heart. It's a beautiful tomato. It's a great sauce tomato. It is so meaty. It's large. I had one that was pushing almost, you know, almost two pounds this year. Um, I like the taste. It makes a great sauce, few seeds. Um, it's a good tomato and I will find definitely find space in the garden for that. Did have a number of different kinds of smaller patio tomatoes like the cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes. Mm, the variety of grape was a Solano. Um, I think it's a, it was an, an AAS winner uh, at one one year. Um, I liked it. It was very prolific. It's very good tasting. Um, I picked the rest of the green ones and they're they're ripening in my basement and we've been still eating them and I still have a lot more green ones. Uh, there's Midnight Snack, which is a beautiful tomato. It's gorgeous. It's purple, has purple shoulders and where the sun hits it, it'll ripen up as red. It was a very gorgeous tomato. It was a very, um, it was a prolific tomato. They are, are large and round, globe-like and they, um, their, their stalks are very sturdy. And uh, it was a very vigorous grower for me. Don't think I'm gonna plant it again. If I still have a couple seeds left, maybe I will find a spot for, you know, one plant. Uh, Candyland, what a hit. <laughs> that is a lovely, lovely current style tomato. Those current styles are probably just about as big as your your pinky fingernail but they're extra sweet and just a joy just to pop in the gar in your mouth when you're out in the garden for that little sweet treat so so those um and then i had wisconsin 55s were another tomato that were extremely prolific i think that they were uh they're not i think they're a uh a partial uh determinant uh, they did very well. I got a huge crop. It might be on the list to plant that one again. And um, uh, there was another one. Oh, oh yes, uh, Tigerell, Tigerella, I think it was. It was a striped tomato. I had a real problem with those. They are about the size of a ping pong ball, and all of them seemed to split. And it had no. Uh, it didn't matter if it had come after a rainy day or if after I watered them, but most all of them split. So I don't think I'll give that one another chance. I had perhaps three or four plants in the garden, and I think I'll find something else um, to try and grow I I instead of that. Um, a cascade was another tomato, very cute, a, a grouping of cascading smallish to medium sized tomatoes, very tasty, very good. I'm not probably going to continue with those. I'll try something else. But anyway, so those are, were basically the, the types of tomatoes that I had in the garden this year and what I plan to continue with and what I'm going to leave off and, and find a substitute for. Oh, and I can't forget, I had the Castellano Genovese, which is a great, beautiful little tomato. Um, I wasn't really sure how big that they were supposed to get. They did not get very large. I, I'm, I'm sure that they are supposed to be a small tomato. Very, very delicious. But uh, eating only or, or roasting them and eating them that way, that was a good one. Also had some Plum Regal tomatoes. Um, a nice decent crop. They were plum tomato and they they lent well to the sauces that that I uh, went ahead and made out of the harvest. Okay on to peppers. Okay the the primary pepper that I planted for having a green or a red pepper was the king of the north. Beautiful pepper, thick walled skin pepper really prolific, didn't start coming on till the very end of the season. I would say almost till September that I really start seeing a, you know, a jump in the production. Um, and some, and they were delicious green, let a lot, you know, they're supposed to be red, but uh, you can let them turn red or you can pick them green. Both ways are, um, are just as good. 
and I like those. I might try those, or I might go with one that's called, I think, California Wonder. Um, uh, I'm, I'm open to trying something new. Natapenos, always a hit in my garden, always prolific. I'm not one for a lot of heat. Um, I will next year plant some jalapenos for some heat. Um, I relied on my neighbor to get jalapenos this year, and and I, I stayed with the jalapenos with the no heat. Um, I had another one with heat. It was called the Sandia, and so I use those, and I dry those, and I use them as pepper flakes in, in all sorts of the, the dishes and everything. I tried also a paprika pepper. Not so much luck. I had a problem with insects attacking them and uh, infiltrating their skins, and then, you know, I'd have big, huge spots that would just grow and grow and grow and the whole pepper then would, would not be any good. But I did get a, I did get a handful of ones that I am drying now to make some paprika. I was disappointed. Might be something to try again, but um, I'll see about that. But that was my pepper crop for this year. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll try something else next year. Another harvest of 2020 was my potatoes, sweet potatoes and regular potatoes. Um, I grew them uh, mostly it, just in those 30 gallon grow bags. I liked the grow bags. Um, they worked well for the purple sweet potatoes. I think they were purple passion. Um, I did plant a few slips of a Beauregard and I didn't get, you know, many at all. <laughs> I think I only got three potatoes. Um, next year, I mean, it was just the fact that I slipped them in at the last minute into um, into the same grow bag with uh, purple potatoes, the purple sweet potatoes. Um, I may have had too much crowded into um, the grow bag, so next year I think I'm going to... Um, use some of the grow bags, but then I'm going to uh, plant some traditionally into the ground, um, spe especially with the, the potatoes, red potatoes and white potatoes. Those I'm going to plant traditionally into the ground in a ditch and then hill them up, which I've had very good luck with in the past with, um, with that method. But the sweet potatoes, I think all in all, it was a pretty good crop. Um, there's Mr. Coop right there. Um, so I'm definitely going to do it again. I'm going to do the orange sweet potatoes for sure. Um, I had an extremely good crop of the, the Japanese white potatoes or Japanese uh, white sweet potatoes. Um, it's a really great potato. It's a good eating potato. It, it mashes up very well, and it's um, it's a little bit on the sweeter side. It's a very good potato. Um, I did get a, a nice quantity of those, and I had those um, in one bag in particular. And most of the rest, uh, two bags of the purple, purple passion sweet potatoes, and then a couple bags of regular white potatoes and red potatoes. So anyway, it's going to be a... It's, it's going to be a chore to to uh, shoehorn in a lot of these a lot of these varieties and vegetables that I want to grow. One thing that I always grow is beets, and I forgot to mention those in the first part of the tried and trues. Um, I usually have uh, a few different varieties: bull's blood. Um, there was a um, an early wonder, I think it was called, and then a robin hybrid. And all of those were very successful. Um, next year, I should have done some progressive planting with those. Um, I was fortunate some stayed small. I picked those and I let some go larger. Um, I'm going to save some of the beet growth, uh, the planting for beets in for fall garden and not just plant them all in the spring. Um, it just, it took up too much garden space and I could have used that, uh, for fall plant, fall plantings. 
So there again, you got to think ahead. Not only are we thinking ahead to spring of 2021, we also have to think ahead to midsummer of 2021 for our fall gardens. So that was the beets. Brassicas, I had a I had great luck with broccoli. That's why I have another fall crop of broccoli, and I think I'll do the same. I had cabbages. Um, the cabbages were all right. They weren't too big. They were rather on the small side. It could be that they are in a location that doesn't get enough sun. Um, we'll see. I think maybe I'll, um, if I have room, I'll put cabbage in. If not, I'm just going to dedicate it to broccoli and then do two plantings of broccoli so I can get some in the spring and then in the fall. Probably put them in earlier in the springtime. I think they didn't get into the garden until, uh, probably May. And I think I could get them into my garden in April with some protective cover on them. Um, I grew the kaolette, which was, I think it was just a free package that I got from, um, mm, might have been Johnny Seeds or something. I can't, oh, Totally Tomatoes or something. I don't know. Uh, cute little plant. <laughs> it's a beautiful plant. Cross between a Brussels sprout and kale. Um, fried up a number of them. Um, I At the end of the year, since they are a br brassica, I didn't have them covered at all. They do grow rather tall. Mine were probably at least uh, to the three feet stage and I didn't cover them. So they did get attacked by some cabbage moths that ate all of the little kaolettes. And I just had a few that I could pick off. So unfortunately, it was a free seed. I had space. I just decided I would, um, you know, give it an experiment. Uh, I don't think that's going to come back to my garden next year. But it was fun to grow. It was a beautiful plant. I may even put it in my flower garden because purple and green, who doesn't love purple and green? <laughs> it's gorgeous. Okay, one of the biggest fails in my garden this year was the pumpkin patch. I just don't know. And it wasn't the fact that I handed over the, the maintenance to my husband because he watered it and he watered it thoroughly. But we got one pumpkin out of four different varieties. So we started looking around our property and we think we found a better location that gets more sun, more natural um, moisture in the, in the ground. And I think maybe we will try, you know, pumpkins in a different location. So, but that was, that was one of the biggest failures in the garden. Um, also, all my herbs that I had planted in the garden, I, you know, they do fine. And, you know, the basil, I had, uh, I had basil bushes in the garden. And after harvest, after harvest, they kept coming back and coming back. And I had basil coming out of my ears. So, which is always a good thing. <laughs> anyway, so... I hope that you can learn something from my mistakes. And I know I learned something from everybody else's mistakes too. And we all gather all of this knowledge together and we all learn together and we learn to grow a bigger and better garden. So keep following along with me on next year's garden. I'll keep you updated on my broccoli and my lettuce is doing fine. Um, let's see how long it lasts. I'm holding out to maybe Christmas time. Uh, it'd be nice to have a fresh salad on the, on the Christmas table, uh, Christmas dinner table with all of my fresh greens. And, um, uh, well, I think I still have parsnips in the grass, in the garden too, in the ground. So that's another one. But anyway, thanks for joining me. If you want to follow me along, please, I would love for you to subscribe and uh, share on all your your platforms that you're you are associated with and um, hit the bell if you want notifications of my next upcoming video okay thanks so much and i'll see you again soon bye bye